Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Adam. You're watching Picture Locked, and today I want to talk a little bit about the movie Joker, which it seems almost everyone else on Earth is also talking about. I don't usually do, like, movie reviews, but the discussion that's going on around this movie is really interesting, and I've got some stuff to add, so I figured I'd make a video on it. So I'm gonna jump right into it, but first, you can't really talk about this movie right now without also talking about the fact that it's sort of become a cultural touchstone for people to talk about violence in movies and its relation to real-life gun violence. And although I definitely think that these discussions are valuable, it seems like this movie has been sort of arbitrarily chosen as the place to talk about them, because it doesn't really have a lot to do with any of these topics. The movie is definitely violent, but it's nothing that we haven't seen before, and in terms of actually glorifying this violence, the movie is leagues behind a lot of other things I've seen recently. It really has nothing to do with the incels who live in a society, and I don't think Arthur's transformation into a villain makes a case compelling or relatable enough to encourage real-life violence any more than the majority of violent movies. If anything, the movie is more about how many chances we had to prevent Joker from happening in the first place. For example, Arthur only becomes violent after losing access to his meds thanks to the government program which provided them being defunded, which is sort of a dangerous stereotype about mental illness. We shouldn't be saying that as soon as someone is off their meds, they are crazy. But we'll talk more about how it handles that in a little bit, and there is more going on here than I think a lot of people are giving it credit for. I don't really think just by showing a mentally ill person being violent, the movie is being socially irresponsible, which is the conclusion a lot of people seem to have come to. Now again, I think these discussions are valuable, and we definitely should be calling out socially irresponsible movies, but it makes me a little uneasy when I see so many people upset that this movie is about a character who doesn't really have any redeeming qualities and is just evil. There are a lot of great movies with characters like this, and just because the wrong person might be able to relate with those characters doesn't mean that they're not valuable to the rest of us and that we shouldn't have them at all. Anyway, none of that is to say that this movie is a modern day taxi driver and it's super important and smart because it's really just not, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to start with the good stuff. Predictably, Joaquin Phoenix is absolutely the best part of this movie, so much so that I think a lot of it wouldn't have actually worked at all without his performance. That's not me pointing fingers at the script or anything, it's just that a lot of what makes this movie so much fun to watch is its slow build towards the insanity that it reaches at its climax. And although the, the, the way that it's shot and the way that it's directed do a good bit to support that, the credit definitely goes to Joaquin because he's the one who's just slowly layering on more and more of this very convincing craziness. It's just, it's it's awesome. When you rewatch the film, I think you really get an appreciation for the work that Joaquin did to slowly turn that dial up the whole movie. Um, and I just tried to match it with our directing styles. On that note, the director, Todd Phillips, also did a pretty good job, which was my biggest concern coming into this movie because his catalog is not exactly in this vein. But I'm happy to report that the directing in this movie feels pretty good. All of the choices that were being made definitely worked well with the story and they worked with Joaquin's performance. And I was actually noticing some comedic type directing, which I thought worked really well in this context. It seemed like a lot of scenes almost had dramatic punchlines at the end, which I'm assuming Todd took directly out of his experience directing comedies, and I think it transfers pretty well. I also liked the general look of this movie. It was definitely better shot than I was expecting, and although the color grading was sometimes dangerously close to the dreaded orange and teal look, I felt that it was different enough and gave the film kind of a cool, gritty yet warm color palette that stayed consistent and was generally enjoyable. It's definitely not like earth shattering or anything, but compared to what DC has brought to the table thus far, this is very refreshing. <laughs> I also really enjoyed the score and felt that it added a lot to some of the most important scenes in the movie. Apparently Todd was pulling a Sergio Leone and playing some of the score on set while they were shooting, which I always think is a really cool thing to do because if everyone on set is hearing the same music, they're all gonna be in that same sort of headspace and I think it helps to make the tone of a shot or a scene just work really well. And I said, hey, you know, I got this piece of music from Hildur. Hildur Gudenitor is our composer, and she had been sending me music throughout while we were shooting. And I just wanted to play Joaquin this piece of music. And he just starts doing this dance, and we both kind of look at each other and said, okay, that's the scene. I can also say that I was never bored during this movie, which is mostly due to its good pacing and its generally consistent rhythm, but also because other than a few minor complaints that we'll get to in a little bit, I thought that the narrative of this film was also pretty good. It definitely kept me guessing throughout, and despite having 
really only one actual character, it always felt like there was enough going on that it wasn't gonna get boring. Now that's obviously partly thanks to the story, but again, I think the majority of the credit here actually goes to Joaquin, because if Arthur and Joker weren't so fascinating to watch, I feel like I probably would have found myself wanting a little bit more out of the other characters. When you make a movie about one person, every other element becomes a character, if that makes sense. So the music is suddenly a character and the locations are suddenly a character and the setting, uh, the, the time period, all those things have a much bigger impact, I've noticed, when it's a movie about one person. So yeah, from a surface level, this movie does have a lot going for it, and it's a fun watch, especially for anyone who likes Joker as a character, or someone who likes movies like this. And if this was just trying to be another popcorn superhero movie, that would be enough. But this movie takes itself really seriously, and the problem is, when we as viewers try to look into it and take it seriously as it wants, it's easy to see that the movie is just sort of hollow and doesn't really have much to say about anything. You know when you're doing a rough draft of an essay or a script or something like that, and initially it's just sort of a spitball mess of all your raw ideas on the page so you won't forget them? The script for this movie sort of feels like that sometimes. It feels like Todd was just trying to get every single thematic idea that he possibly had on the page, but then he never came back and revised it, and we ended up just seeing that jumbled mess in film form. To be clear, I'm not talking about the story. I've already said that the story makes sense and is coherent and easy to follow. I'm more talking about what this movie is actually about. It was sometimes genuinely confusing how quickly this movie changed its mind about what it wanted to be about. One second it was capitalism or wealth disparity, the next it was mental health and childhood trauma or the impacts of a failing healthcare system. Which are all very interesting and important topics, and I really like movies that make me think about these things, but after a few days of thinking about Joker, I just had nothing to say. There are lots of great movies that bring up different themes that may be disconnected or even at odds with each other, so the problem isn't really how many things this movie tries to bring up, it's that you don't get credit for just acknowledging that something exists. It probably goes the most in depth on mental health and the stigmas surrounding it, but even with that, it drops it before it's able to get anywhere interesting, and so we end up with social commentary that feels cliched and like it doesn't really have anything to add to the discussion. Joaquin's performance feels so real and fleshed out that it adds a little bit more depth to some of these cliches, but under the surface they're still just the same. It's important to note that none of that is to say that Joker isn't a unique character. I don't really think you can diagnose what his actual mental illness is. That's because he's got a lot going on and is definitely sort of his own thing. Which I think is good because it means that the movie can't apply any of these cliches to any actual mental illnesses. For example, if the movie were to specify that Joker had, let's say, manic depression, and then as soon as he was off his meds he just started killing people, that would be a pretty big oof. But luckily, Joker is just sort of his own thing. The cliches come more from how he's used in the script to talk about these issues rather than him as a character, which honestly just feels like a waste of such a great performance and makes me wish that the script was able to stick to its guns a little bit more. For the most part, this lack of thematic depth didn't really take away from my enjoyment of the movie, because that's not really what I went to see it for. But in that vein, there is one thing that really bothered me, and that's the way the film tried to tie Joker to the protests about wealth inequality that were going on around him and that he supposedly started. This is a very real issue right now, but no one championing it would see three innocent students murdered on a train, even if they were assholes and decide that that was a reason for them to start protesting wealth inequality. They're just very unrelated. And Joker does not care or have anything to do with this movement. He just kills people because he's a villain. Arbitrarily tying Joker to this social movement in and of itself is not necessarily a problem, but when all the movie really does is compare these protesters to Joker, who is a villain, it comes across as this weird anti-protest, pro-unregulated capitalism message, and although based on its other themes, I doubt this is what the film is actually trying to say, there's so little here that I'm not sure what else you're supposed to take away from it. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this is the sort of thing that could just be me, honestly. I haven't seen this movie more than once, and it's possible that I'm missing something, and the movie actually does have more to say than I think it does. So if you have any idea what it's saying, or any other theories about any of this, please let me know down in the comments. I'm very curious, and I'll definitely be down there discussing with you guys, because there's definitely a lot to talk about with this movie. But I do think this is a good example of an issue that I've been noticing a lot recently, and that's movies that seem to feel the need to bring up social issues, even though they don't actually have anything to say about them. So they just end up sort of misrepresenting them and just being like, hey look, this, this here, this exists. 
I don't know anything about it or why it exists or have anything to say, but it sure does exist. So yeah, that's gonna do it. What did you think of Joker? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm very curious. Um, and let me know if you want to see more reviews like this. I don't really want to turn this into a review channel, but when there's movies like this that just everyone is talking about and there's so much fun to talk about, I might whip out a video like this every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching, um, and I will see you in the next one.